Hi everybody, Patrick here from Engineering Shock Electronics, engineeringshock.com. This is the Arduino Butler getting started video. If you haven't already watched the unboxing video and you have a butler in your possession, I highly suggest watching that one first uh, and checking out the project page because that's where all of this information is going to end up. So you've got your butler in front of you. The LCD is installed. The uh, USB jumper is, uh, is, is in place. Next, what you want to do is get a set of powered speakers, like a set of computer speakers, and you want to plug them in, plug it in to the stereo output on the butler. And you, if you have a, a keyboard, an external computer keyboard, that's PS2, it fits in right here. If you have a keyboard that is not PS2, but USB, then you're going to want to use the adapter. This adapter fits in place right here and allows for you to plug in a USB keyboard. Now, not all USB keyboards work, but most do. But if you don't, if your keyboard doesn't work, don't worry. Until you find another one, we can use the keyboard, or the onboard keypad, rather. And I'll get to that in just a little bit. You get a three-pack of uh, CR2025 uh, batteries and plug one in right here. And that will allow for your real-time clock chip to hold the time over a long period of time, and this will be its battery backup. So it'll hold your programmed time and date in long term. And one of the uh, projects for the Butler shows you how to do that, and it's actually quite easy to do. There'll be a separate video for that. If you have an SD card, it plugs in right here. I'm using a Samsung 8GB card, and it plugs in right here. Again, that is not mandatory, and neither is this, but it's something that's nice to have and nice to do for full functionality. I've removed the sensor cover, the buzzer cover rather, and uh, as you can see, I've got all the dip switches on this dip switch set to off, except for dip switch C, which is also dip switch 3. I've got that set to on, because I want to be referred to as sir. If I turn that off, it will refer to me as ma'am. Anyway, so I'll power it up. The butler. I am programmed to serve you, sir. Please enter your security access code. So the skeleton code is, uh, is 9823. Any other one will give me an incorrect response. Access denied. Please enter your security access code. Now you can program in your own code, but this is a skeleton code. Access granted. Would you like to log your mood for the day? If so, Enter in a value from 0 to 9 on the keypad. This is optional. You have 3 seconds to do it. 0 is the worst. 9 is, the, is a good mood. 0 is a terrible mood. It'll log your uh, it'll log your mood as many times as you'd like in EEPROM memory and averages it. There's a, if, you, if I type in the command... Uh, uh, what is it offhand? I'm trying to think of what it is. You know what? I don't remember what it is. So let me type in the command directory, or dir. Please ensure that the serial monitor is open to view the program directory. So if I have my serial monitor open right now, uh, what will happen is I'll, I'll see an entire directory of my pieces of code that are installed in the chip, uh, and I can use keywords from my keypad to um, uh, to 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 uh, enter in those commands and, and call programs. For instance, like light. My light level is 572. That's the uh, analog to digital response. If I do that again, light, and I cover the light sensor, I'll get a different value. So that's just one of the one of the interesting ways that this works. If I don't have a keypad that works, or I don't want to use a keypad at all to make things a little bit more um, movable, what I can do is I can set dip switch one, which is also dip switch A, to on. I've removed my keyboard, uh, power it up. The butler. I am programmed to serve you, sir. Please enter your security access code. Access granted. Would you like to log your mood for the day? If so, enter in a value from 0 to 9 on the keypad. So I'll enter in 5. Feeling pretty Thank good. You. Your mood has been logged. Now, I don't have a keyboard connected. I'm going to type in 03. I'm going to make sure my serial monitor is open. And this is going to print the entire directory of commands to the serial monitor. Please ensure that the serial monitor is open to view the program directory. So look at all those codes. 
There's a there's an explanation of what each one is and what which each one of these is a program. So I'm going to now enter in. Let's see. I want to change my security password, or rather, I'm going to install it for the first time and save it in EEPROM memory. Twenty one is program. So I'll type in twenty one. Please enter your security access code. Let's do one two three four. Thank you. That's all done. So now that we've covered the very, very few things we need to know about this, um, we need to know how we can talk to it, how we can, it, we, without the right drivers and the right libraries, we can't update the code, we can't change the code, we can't even connect to the computer. So first things first, in the project page, right underneath this video, there's a, a set of instructions as to what you need to do to get the to get and install the CH340G um, USB bridge chip. You need that driver. Now, if you have a Mac computer, there are ways to do it. It's just a bit more complicated. Unfortunately, I'm, I only have uh, Windows machines, and uh, and so my instructions are based for Windows machines users. But there have been plenty of um, uh, of a of a Mac users who use the Epic and other devices that use the CH340G. There are resources on Instructables.com. There are also a, a series of libraries that you'll need to install and import into your Arduino IDE uh, and I've set I've, I've uh, made a list of those some of them come include, included with Arduino uh, and some need to be installed from github they are safe to download I've sent links and uh, and yeah so another thing we need to do is we need to be able to uh, determine hey are we actually connected and we need to look and see how do we actually program the uh, the butler itself so let's have a look at the IDE if your CH340G has been properly, uh, if the driver has been properly installed, you'll be able to find out for sure because you can go to control panel. Um, you just have to get to your control panel on your computer. Go to view devices and printers. And at the bottom, I see USB serial CH340G on COM5. Good job. And we are connected to the butler, of course. It has recognized us. So I'm going to go to the tools menu at the top. I'm going to go down and see, yeah, just verify I am connected to COM5. Now what you want to do also is you want to make sure that your board is set to, under tools, board is Arduino Mega or Arduino 2560, and your processor should update to that. Make sure it updates to at Mega 2560 and not at, uh, at Mega 1280. And you're on COM5. So now what we can do is you can go to the project page and load any of the sample codes. We just have to open up a new, uh, uh, a new file. See if I edit and select all. I can open up. I can basically copy the pay, the the code sample from the project page. Plunk it in here. Control V. And I should be able to upload it directly. And I'll just save this as Butler 6. It's going to take a while to uh, to compile. And uh, you'll see it at the bottom. My computer's a little bit slow. But once uh, it'll say compiling sketch. Now your Butler comes pre-programmed with the latest code, but I'm going to be changing that code and updating it. And uh, the whole idea is that you use this as a learning experience because I give you several fundamental code samples that start small and add to it. So for instance, the first code sample, uh, Fundamentals 1, talks about uh, using the external keyboard and how the, how the, uh, the code processes that data. And the second is uh, about is the audio section. The third fundamental video is how we use state machines and the uh, the state machines function. There we go. We're uploading uh, to basically call all the programs we have installed. And the idea is that you use this fund these fundamental videos and fundamental code samples to really understand what's going on, so you can create your own directories of your yeah. own codes. Oh, it's done uploading and, and program. it's talking program. to us. Yeah. Please enter your security access code. It's asking me for my access code, and now it can be three two, uh, sorry, 9823, or it can be 1234, because I've programmed in my own, and it's saved into EEPROM memory. Access granted. Would you like to log your mood for the day? If so, enter in a value from 0 to 9 on the keypad. Okay, so another thing. If you don't want the security access code, if you don't want to have to worry about that every time you power up, comment it out of the code. This is your code now. The butler is yours to make and to do with as you please. You've got a massive audio library to play with. You've got tons of peripherals to play with. 
and uh, a boatload of code samples, and it's all commented. Everything's commented. So even if you're even if you're a little skittish, you're still new to Arduino. You know, look through stuff, experiment with stuff. If you manage to completely screw up your code and you can't get it to compile, go backwards. You always can. You can always go back to the project page and recopy old old code. And I'm always gonna I'm, I'm gonna be adding uh, a series of videos that talk about some of the basic programs, like um, like memory or sorry, the, my mood. I think the the, the uh, what is the uh, if I open up the I'm gonna have to open up the uh, um, the uh, ooh, you know what I can actually do. I can actually do this on the fly. I've set um, the uh, dip switch one or a back to uh, off. I can plug this back in. I'm just gonna type in zero zero. Code is one. It always defaults to one. If it's zero, it defaults to one. And so now I've got this set back in my my keyboard and. Uh, it's not looking for this anymore. It's looking for an actual uh, keyword from the keyboard. If I type in my mood and press enter. Your mood has been decent. I hope that you have a great day. So you keep logging your moods if you want to. And what's going to happen is over time, it's going to average your mood entries. And it's kind of kind of give you an idea. If you log your mood for a month, it's going to tell you, heck, you haven't been doing that great. Or, yeah, you've been okay. You know, who, it's COVID, right? Nobody's having a good time. You know, some people are, I guess, but not very many people. It's been hard for us, I know. Uh, so, uh, if, but if I'm pressing 9 every day, it's going to say, hey, you've been doing great, man. But you can also flash your memory at any time. If you want If you want to get rid of your, your mood loggings, um, type in flash mood. Keep in mind, you can also press backspace if you make a mistake. Would you like to flash my memory? Yeah, yes. Executing. There you go. Sorry for the uh, the glare there. So lots of lots of programs on here. I've only shown you a couple of them, but I've basically given you a whole bunch to play with. Um, if you don't have all of the, if you don't have the driver installed properly, you won't be able to upload to it. You won't be able to use the serial monitor. You will be able to power it up, and it still has the default code on it. So you can still play with it, but you're going to need that CH340G driver. Uh, if you don't have all of the libraries installed, the relative libraries that are talked about on the project page, if they are not properly installed, you're going to have problems compiling. It will not compile if, if it, a library is missing. And if you decide to remove anything, uh, say you want to remove the uh, NRF24L01 libraries, there's actually two of them, you're going to need to make sure that you comment out any code that has to do with um, with the variables that pertain to those libraries. Otherwise, the compiler is going to say, "What is this?" You know, so it's going to you know. There's so much code. There's I think more than a, there's certainly more than a thousand lines. I think it's actually closer to two thousand off the top of my head. So there's a lot to play with. This is why I suggest start with the fundamentals because you don't need to use any of my codes. Use the fundamentals to get started with the keyboard and the audio. And from there, just install your own codes, make your own directory, and you're off to the races. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Uh, I hope that this has given you enough information. Again, the project page is a wealth of information, and I'm going to be updating it with more videos that talk about some of the electronic components on here, just so that you have all the information you need when your butler arrives. Thanks so much, and take care of yourself, everybody. Bye.